Wow, that was an amazing fireworks show we had. Um, guys, what was that? Um, I don't know. Come on guys, let's find out. Uh, oh my god, what the heck is this? <laughs> oh no 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 Oxygen Cooper, please, don't cry. He's only fainted badly. What? Do we fix that? Uh, no. He just, he just fainted very badly. Hmm. Maybe the fireworks came in the Rapsi. Uh, I never heard of that. Rapsi is a brand new sword. That's a serious condition. Oh, now I see. So what do we do now? I know we need to recover him. There's no other than Kudugi. Although, I never met him before. I heard that. What's going on? Um, who are you? Why, hello, good Iggy Koopa. I'm Stuffy, Stuffy the Brave Dragon. I'm a brave dragon. My full name is Stuffy Philbert McStuffins. Actually, my middle name is Philbert, but close enough. Doc needs us to help out, not make things worse. Ah, yes, you're a brave dragon from the 2012 show Doc McStuffins. I never heard of that show. Anyway, what's going on? There's a problem. Philium Koopa got an epilepsy due to the fireworks. Do something here. What? Oh no. This is horrible. Don't worry, I'll use my recovery wand to make him much better. It's a good thing I invented it a few months ago. How is it going to help? My recovery wand can recover people from fainting very badly of any kind. Headaches, vertigos, epilepsies, you name it. Wait what? But, but how? I never expect that to see this invention right here. What's this got to do with this? I'm curious what it does. Oh, I'll show you what it does all right. Watch this. Ha ha wow. That's pretty cool. Ugh, what just happened? You fell into epilepsy Fulium Koopa. Ugh, I saw too many fireworks at the fireworks show. Well, you had to see it coming Fulium Koopa. Not everyone has it. And I'm so sorry you have gotten through this. You made me extremely worried. I thought you died. Dead? Oh no 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 no. I was just fainted very badly due to epilepsy. I can't believe what I'm saying, but I'm so sorry for you Thulium Koopa. Maybe the fireworks gave you epilepsy when you saw the fireworks. Ugh, I saw too many fireworks when I got here. And I don't know about you but the fireworks were too much to me. Boy I don't like epilepsies too. Yes, don't blame us. Blame the fireworks when you got to the fireworks show yesterday. Ugh, okay. Maybe the fireworks did gave me epilepsy. Don't worry, it's not your fault. It was the fireworks fault if fireworks gave me an epilepsy. Maybe I shouldn't go through this next year cause these fireworks gave me epilepsy. Oh jeez, I, too, feel sorry about what you have gotten. Maybe it was the fireworks caused this to have an epilepsy. Also, if you didn't know, let me explain about epilepsy. Epilepsy is a group of non-communicable neurological disorders characterized by recurrent epileptic seizures in the central nervous system. Another term for an epilepsy is a seizure disorder. An epileptic seizure is a clinical manifestation of an abnormal, excessive, purposeless and synchronized electrical discharge in the brain cells called neurons. The occurrence of two or more unprovoked seizures defines epilepsy. The occurrence of just one seizure may warrant a definition set out by the International League Against Epilepsy, in a more clinical usage for recurrence may be able to be prejudged. Epileptic seizures can vary from brief and nearly undetectable periods to long periods of vigorous shaking due to abnormal electrical activity in the brain. These episodes can result in physical injuries, either directly such as broken bones or through causing accidents. In epilepsy, Seizures tend to recur and may have no immediate underlying cause. Isolated seizures that are provoked by a specific cause such as poisoning are not deemed to represent epilepsy. People with epilepsy may be treated differently in various areas of the world and experience varying degrees of social stigma due to the alarming nature of their symptoms. The underlying mechanism of an epileptic seizure is excessive and abnormal neuronal activity in the cortex of the brain which can be observed in the electroencephalogram of an individual. The reason this occurs in most cases of epilepsy is unknown. Some cases occur as the result of brain injury, stroke, brain tumors, infections of the brain, 
or birth defects through a process known as epileptogenesis. Known genetic mutations are directly linked to a small proportion of cases. The diagnosis involves ruling out other conditions that might cause similar symptoms, such as fainting, and determining if another cause of seizures is present such as alcohol withdrawal or electrolyte problems. This may be partly done by imaging the brain and performing blood tests. Epilepsy can often be confirmed with an electroencephalogram, but a normal test does not rule out the condition. Epilepsy that occurs as a result of other issues may be preventable. Seizures are controllable with medication in about 69% of cases, and expensive anti-seizure medications are often available. In those whose seizures do not respond to medication, surgery, neurostimulation or dietary changes may then be considered. Not all cases of epilepsy are lifelong, and many people improve to the point that treatment is no longer needed. As of 2020, about 50 million people have epilepsy. Nearly 80% of cases occur in the developing world. In 2015, it resulted in 125,000 deaths an increase from 112,000 in 1990. Epilepsy is more common in older people. In the developed world, onset of new cases occurs most frequently in babies and the elderly. In the developing world, onset is more common at the extremes of age, in younger children and in older children and young adults due to differences in the frequency of the underlying causes. About 5-10% to 10 of people will have an unprovoked seizure by the age of 80 with the chance of experiencing a second seizure rising to between 40% and 50%. In many areas of the world, those with epilepsy either have restrictions placed on their ability to drive or are not permitted to drive until they are free of seizures for a specific length of time. The word epilepsy is from ancient Greek, meaning to seize, possess, or afflict. In 2017, the LA published another report announcing new classifications of epilepsies and seizures. These guidelines introduce new terms and remove some older ones. The new classification system categorized epilepsy according to its type of seizure. There are many types of epilepsy. In fact, more than 30 known epilepsy syndromes, including childhood absence epilepsy, gelastic epilepsy, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, abdominal epilepsy, tonic epilepsy, tonic clonic epilepsy, clonic epilepsy, limbic epilepsy, benign Rolandic epilepsy, childhood idiopathic occipital epilepsy, partial frontal lobe epilepsy, frontal lobe epilepsy, myoclonic epilepsy, temporal lobe epilepsy, secondary generalized epilepsy, focal epilepsy, atonic epilepsy, myoclonic atonic epilepsy, combined generalized and focal epilepsy, unknown epilepsy, generalized epilepsy, partial onset epilepsy, negative myoclonus, symptomatic febrile, myoclonic minocondyral disorder, simple partial seizure, non-epileptic seizure, epileptic seizure, focal unaware seizure, focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizure, focal impaired awareness seizure, febrile seizure, generalized onset seizure, posterior neocortex, status epilepticus, landau klefnor Lennox gastaut Dravet syndrome, Rasmussen syndrome, Landau Klefner syndrome, Lennox Gastaut syndrome, Deuce syndrome, West syndrome, massive bilateral myoclonus, benign Rolandic, idiopathic partial, atypical absence, complex febrile, infantile spasm, eyelid myoclonia, psychomotor, atonic reflex, orocant and ua, myoclonic absence, typical absence, psychogenic reflex and a hypothalamic hematoma. Epilepsy can be dangerous while seizure occurs at certain times. The risk of drowning or being involved in a motor vehicle collision is higher. It is also dangerous while seizure occurs during pregnancy. Certain anti-epileptic medications increase the risk of birth defects. It is also found that people with epilepsy are more likely to have psychological problems. Other complications include aspiration pneumonia and difficulty learning. Epilepsy is usually treated with daily medication. The oldest medical records show that epilepsy has been affecting people at least since the beginning of recorded history. Throughout ancient history, the disease was thought to be a spiritual condition. The world's oldest description of an epileptic seizure comes from a text in Akkadian, a language used in ancient Mesopotamia, and was written around 2000 BC. The oldest known detailed record of the disease itself is in the Sekiku, a Babylonian cuneiform medical text from 1067 to 1046 BC. This text gives signs and symptoms, details treatment and likely outcomes. 
and describes many features of the different seizure types. As the Babylonians had no biomedical understanding of the nature of disease, they attributed the seizures to possession by evil spirits and called for treating the condition through spiritual means. Around 900 BC, Punar Vasubhatriya described epilepsy as loss of consciousness as the definition was carried forward into the Ayurvedic texts of Chaka Summit around 400 BC. The ancient Greeks had contradictory views of the disease. They thought of epilepsy as a form of spiritual possession, but also associated the condition with genius and the divine. One of the names they gave to it was a sacred disease. Epilepsy appears within Greek mythology. It is associated with the moon goddesses Selene and Artemis who afflicted those who upset them. The Greeks thought that important figures such as Julius Caesar and Hercules had the disease. The notable exception to this divine and spiritual view was that of the school of Hippocrates. In the 5th century BC, Hippocrates rejected the idea that the disease was caused by spirits. In his landmark work on the sacred disease, he proposed that epilepsy was not divine in origin and instead was a medically treatable problem originating in the brain. He accused those of attributing a sacred cause to the disease of spreading ignorance through a belief in superstitious magic. Hippocrates proposed that heredity was important as a cause, described worse outcomes of the disease presence at an early age and made note of the physical characteristics as well as the social shame associated with it. Instead of referring to it as the sacred disease, he used the term great disease, giving rise to the modern term grand mal, used for tonic clonic seizures. Despite his work detailing the physical origins of the disease, his view was not accepted at the time. Evil spirits continued to be blamed until at least the 17th century. In ancient Rome people did not eat or drink with the same pottery as that used by someone who was affected. People of the time would spit on their chest believing that this would keep the problem from affecting them. According to Apuleius and other ancient physicians, to detect epilepsy, it was common to light a piece of gadgates, whose smoke would trigger the seizure. Occasionally a spinning potter's wheel was used, perhaps a reference to photosensitive epilepsy. In most cultures, persons with epilepsy have been stigmatized, shunned, or even imprisoned. As late as in the second half of the 20th century, in Tanzania and other parts of Africa epilepsy was associated with possession by evil spirits, witchcraft, or poisoning and was believed by many to be contagious. In the Salpetriere, the birthplace of modern neurology, Jean Martin Charcot found people with epilepsy side by side with the mentally ill those with chronic syphilis, and the criminally insane. In ancient Rome, epilepsy was known as the Latin, morbus comitulus, lit. disease at the assembly hall and was seen as a curse from the gods. In northern Italy, epilepsy was once traditionally known as St. Valentine's malady. In at least the 1840s in the United States of America, epilepsy was known as the falling sickness or the falling fits and was considered a form of medical insanity. Patients of epilepsy in France were also known as French, tumbers, lit. People who fall, due to the seizures and loss of consciousness in an epileptic episode. In the mid-19th century, the first effective anti-seizure medication, bromide, was introduced. The first modern treatment, phenobarbital, was developed in 1912 with phenytoin coming into use in 1938. Epilepsy occurs in a number of other animals including dogs and cats. It is in fact the most common brain disorder in dogs. It is typically treated with anticonvulsants such as phenobarbital or bromide in dogs and phenobarbital in cats. Imepidone is also used in dogs. While generalized seizures in horses are fairly easy to diagnose, it may be more difficult in non-generalized seizures and eggs may be useful. If there are no doctors here to cure him, Diggy Cupin may be very useful to do that. Oh, and Thulium Koopa, are you feeling better? Oh, thank you, Goodiggy Kepper. You're such a great Capalian. You're welcome. Man! I don't like getting epilepsies that makes me faint. The same goes to Vertigos. Sorry, guys, I suffered an epilepsy when I got to the fireworks show. You know what? I'm just gonna forget what I got. Man, do we feel bad for him.